What's happening? Ronan here. All right, so a lot of guys, uh, young guys, old guys, really don't understand the risks in society. And so I think a lot of guys, they exaggerate or underestimate the risks of various circumstances. So I want to break it down. Let's get realistic here. So gold diggers is common topic, right? What is a gold digger? Gold digger is a woman who is using love, faking love, to get money and prestige and status from a man. Okay? So the tools are love and affection. Very, very dangerous for a man. Why so dangerous? Why it's so dangerous? Because men are taught when they're growing up, boys are taught that uh, if you look online, like, well, who should I marry? How do I know if, I, if, if she's the one? It's all about the one. Okay? The one. And the one is the one that's going to get you emotionally. You can't live without her. And you feel, you feel something, right? You feel like you can't stop thinking about her. You can't stop talking about her. She's on your mind and you don't want to lose her. That's the one. Now, that's how men are trained. We are trained. Basically, don't listen to your emotions. Cover up your emotions. Don't cry. Don't have feelings. Don't have needs. Just go out there, do what you're supposed to do, succeed, uh, excel. But in one circumstance, men are taught to really listen to their feelings. And that's about the one. They're basically, men are not taught really any warnings about this. It's, it's really like, honestly, I think society finds it very convenient for men to, <laughs> to focus on this one emotion. So basically ignore all your emotions, that, that none of them matter. But this one, you better fucking get ready and everybody's going to support you. In fact, everybody's going to cheer you off the cliff on this one. Really, whenever you tell somebody, I don't know, I think I'm in love with this girl. I can't stop thinking about her. Huge smiles across their faces. And I think it's, it's kind of like, you know, for teachers at, at prestigious universities, when a student gets a job, okay, one of, the, one of the fears right now of higher education is that students are not getting jobs. And so it looks bad to the school. They're like, eee, we, you know, the, the guy spent, the parents spent all this money and then the student can't get a job. And, you know, they weren't preparing the student for the real world. It's not working. It's not an investment. And, that, and they're afraid that's going to affect people's decisions in the future, right? And so when a student gets a job, trust me, the schools are like, hell yeah. <laughs> One more out of the fucking nest, right? You know what I mean? Like, whoo, they're gone. Okay, on to the next, on to the next, on to the next. And obviously they don't care about every student. But generally, that's the way it is. And I think society is exactly the same way with men. It's like you come into life, you know, study hard as a man, learn things, excel at sports, whatever it is that you excel at. Could, these days could be playing video games, whatever it is that will give you a career. And then you go off and then you, uh, you know, your parents, you know, give you food and stuff and, you know, like give you a house to live in. And then, then you find a, you, you, get a, you get a job and you're, now you're making some money. And then what's next? The next thing is, you got to get a woman, right? That's the next thing society says. And if a guy is too picky, you know, then society, it's not very convenient for them. Yeah, society likes simple. They, especially when it comes to men, society doesn't really have time for anything, any of men's problems. They don't care. They're not listening. And I think that that's why I'm going to talk about gold diggers, because I believe that the effect of gold diggers historically is very, very outsized. It's very big, actually, on men's psyche and men's decisions. But men have never quantified it, haven't really thought about it. But it creates a fear in men because men know this is real. You know this is real. Everybody has seen a gold digging female who has ruined a man's life. Everybody that's listening, whether it's on TV you know, stars, you've seen women who fake their love and they get prestige and then they don't care, right? They don't care. You saw this, especially like in the 70s with music producers, they would meet girls and they would make them into stars. 
you know, these are just women, just normal women. Like they'd meet them, I don't know, in the 70s. You know, you meet, you meet somebody at the roller skating rink or whatever. And then, uh, you know, the guy thinks she's hot. And then next thing you know, she's like uh, got an album, right? And that was really common. That was really, really common. And actually, same thing with Hollywood. Uh, in the 30s, 40s, 50s, you know, you would producers, they get a girlfriend. Next thing you know, she's the latest star in a movie because you don't need that much talent. You can just keep reshooting and reshooting if you got the money. If Howard Hughes is back in you, you can make anybody sound good, okay? Uh, not, obviously, there are some limits, but not that many. Now, today, it's much more difficult, I think. I, I think because of the internet, that the hunger and the knowledge that the customers have now, much higher and much more is demanded than before. But in the old days, historically, we're talking about here, why is this such a big deal in men's minds, right? Why talk about gold diggers now? What's, is this, isn't this just a pejorative term used for women? No, no. It is something that is very real for men. It's a, it, it has devastating effects on men, and it basically scares the living shit out of men. And it should. The problem is, is that men don't know how to handle that. There's nobody talking about it. There's nobody giving guys a blueprint to understand the real risks and how they should really respond, right? Well, how should they think about this? Obviously, you don't want to waste your life with somebody who doesn't love you, who doesn't even care about you, who just wants something from you. And that feeling, okay, that uh, when somebody fakes affection and love and doesn't mean it is, is, is more destructive than you think, Okay, this is what is never talked about. This utterly guts people. Okay, I'm just going to say this right now. I, I see this in different aspects. I'm going to, I really thought about this episode. So let me, let me say here, other times I think the similar dynamic is at work. Uh, so basically, whenever somebody fakes love to get something, okay, that whenever this is found out, it absolutely devastates the person who is the target of this. And I think also, I think there's different levels of this too. Okay, so for example, I, I know a guy who married this girl. He's, his family's quite wealthy. And he married this girl. And they were like, I don't know what it was, like two weeks past the honeymoon. And they were back home. They had a two-story house. And she was on the first floor talking to her friend. And he was upstairs sleeping, but he wasn't sleeping because he was reading a book. And she thought he was asleep, but he woke up and he just started reading his book. So, strange, this fire alarm keeps going off today in the building. Uh, but, uh, so, what happened was, she was talking to her friend and he could hear her. But he, he didn't mean to hear her, he was like just reading his book. But the door was open and he could hear. And he heard her tell her friend, his wife... Okay, his newlywed wife, that she married him for the money. That that's it. She just wanted his money. And he also had a very prestigious family. So that would be, that's a double whammy. She said money, but I would have to say, because I know this guy, is that it was also for prestige and status. So those are the three things. And this makes it, that's why it's so confusing. Gold diggers are so confusing because there's different aspects to it. And... Many people think that every woman is a gold digger. That's not true. That is not true. So my friend was absolutely devastated. But he was a, he's, he was a good, what do you call it? Like, he was a very good boy, right? He was, I like this alarm, actually, because this alarm is really what you should be hearing in your mind when you think of gold diggers. There should be a goddamn alarm going off telling you that you might die. Because that is the reality. So why is this so devastating? My friend was utterly gutted, but he never confronted her with it. He told me, but he never confronted her. Because why? Because he was so destroyed. He really believed that this woman loved him. And he was totally serious. And this guy is a cool guy. Okay, he's a player. He was a real player when he was single. And I think that was part of her thing. Gold diggers are very, very cold. And very, very calculating. And they are thinking of only the long term. And I will say that there are men 
who fit this description. Let me let me let me describe it because I want you to really understand it. This is not about this. I really want you to get the nuts and bolts of this one. Okay, so faking love for something. Okay, and then when you find out, my friend, like he didn't even. I'll, I might go into him later, but he was so gutted he couldn't even talk about it. I mean, like he was like a zombie. Like even today. I don't even think he can talk about it. I, I'm serious. Like I don't think he can even. It's so devastating to him, and he he can't put words to it. And I, because of that, I don't talk to him about it because I know that it's just too. It's it's like you know when you when you stumble on a topic that's just it overwhelms somebody emotionally. You know, uh, I, you know if you ask somebody about their child, and then the child had died or something, you know, and the the parent like goes into a tailspin that you can't get them out of. And you're just like, oh, I, you're thinking, God, I wish I wouldn't have asked that, you know. But uh, you you can't take it back. And the person is now in this, like, emotional spiral. Now, there are tools to get out of emotional spirals. And I know those tools. And that's very, very important to know that you're not, a, you, you don't, you have control of your mind as a man. There are very powerful techniques that you can use and you can learn, but you have to learn them before you need them to not do that. But Okay, so that's part of the reason why this gold digging stuff is not really analyzed. It's very devastating, okay? You might say, ah, you know, like Ronan's exaggerating. It's not that devastating. We all know that you know, people want this from us. You know, we learn this. Okay, yeah, there is truth to that, definitely. You know, we, we all, we know that people want stuff from us, that they might be lying. We all know that. But it's different It's different when you believe it, okay? And that is the problem. Like, you don't believe most people, okay? You're just going to like, yeah, whatever, whatever. But there's certain people that you believe. And when you do believe them and and you find out that it was a total lie, you feel this sense of like, uh, I don't know what the word is. It's, it's, it basically, this is the type of thing, okay? This is the type of, isolation and loneliness that can lead to extreme decisions like de- like deep depression and suicide this is the type of stuff because it puts a guy and that's why it's so dangerous because logically you can know something but the problem is when your your subconscious emotional mind gets into the tailspin into the whirlpool it gets sucked into the black hole is that you have no if you haven't uh, in many cases, guys have no control and no ability to stop this. And they just feel so terrible. They can't, they like literally cannot get out of it. It's like this sticky situation. I think it becomes much worse because of the fact that society ignores it and will not listen to men. And if you even mention this to some people, literally, that you were torn apart by a woman, a gold digger, they're going to say, you know, like, basically, you're putting women down. They're not all like that. It's like you're sitting there, like, on the edge of... The, you're, you're looking into the darkness. You don't see any hope. And people are saying totally unrelated things that, with no sympathy for how you feel and what you've been through. I guess the other, word, the other uh, type of person you can see this in is rock stars. Okay? Rock stars... They, when they get famous, you know, very, very famous, very, very rich, why do so many commit suicide? Why do so many get into drugs? Why? Especially in the 60s and 70s and 80s. Why? Because, well, one, because of the internet, a rock star is not a rock star anymore. Okay? It doesn't exist. The dynamics that created what I'm talking about Almost don't exist. I'm, I, there are a couple people now who I would say are close to rock star status, but because there's so many things to, for young people to focus on, that and because the world has changed so much, that music does not does not create the same dynamic that it used to. Okay, and what the Rolling Stones experienced with their groupies in their private jet in the '60s, you never it, it doesn't exist anymore. That, that that dynamic just it just it, it isn't here there's no there's no place and in fact even if you look at a replacement for rock stars which would be like people who found you know facebook google these kind of 
the, the level of devotion that was given to these guys, the level of magnetism that they had, the availability of fresh young pussy was just, it was something that never existed. Kings didn't have it in the old days. No way. No way. They had domination over people, but not this same type of thing I'm talking about. Now, why do those, why did those guys who got so much better than anybody else, why did so many of them commit suicide? Right? It's a great question. And uh, I think the reason is so clear. It's the same problem. It's the same dynamic we're talking about. Is that they could not find anybody who really loved them. They could not tell who was real and who was not. It threw their whole reality into a tailspin. And you can really see this. At one of my favorite movies of all time is Pink Floyd, The Wall. And that guy, the main, the main character. You know, that, that guy is an epitome of this type of thing. He, I won't give it away, but if you haven't seen it, you should. it's a great movie. Get some decent speakers and blast the shit out of the wall. It's just such a great movie. Uh, but okay, so so it it led to a almost a uh, I I honestly can't exaggerate this one. Like look, you guys, you know that it's easy to exaggerate. It? No, <laughs> this one is so devastating and so difficult to put your finger on. Uh, why did these guys commit? Just think about it. All these rock stars died at like twenty six years old. Jim Morrison. Right. There's just an endless list of guys. And then you had the Nirvana. That was the last of the rock stars, that kind of era. And, you know, same thing. They had no hope. Why no hope? They got money. They got girls. They got prestige. They got people listening to them. What was it? What was it? Was it drugs? No. Drugs are everywhere. No. It was this loss of hope and feeling that they will never find a real human connection. So this is what you fuck with. This is what, this is why gold diggers have such a huge effect on men's psyche, and and men don't even understand it. Men can't uh, enunciate what I'm talking about, but it creates a fear in men, and they can't explain it. But it's just like men have an incredible fear of being used by being tricked with fake love. Okay, and more guys. If you're if you're thinking to yourself. Hey, I, this doesn't affect me. You're probably still listening because you're like, shit, Ronan's stuff is pretty good. I'm going to listen to it anyway. But I'm going to say that you need to listen even closer because if you don't have, let's say you don't have money and you, so you think, well, I'm, I'm listening to this. It's interesting, but I'm safe because I'm not, I know a woman's going to want me. I mean, I don't have any money. I'm going to tell you that there's so many ways to misconceive this. Let me tell you some of the ways, right? Is one is you can come you can suddenly come across money. Okay, it happens. There are women who will wait at a guy's death death's door. So he's seventy nine years old. Women marry the guy to get his inheritance and take away from his family and the people that love him to take his money away. And this happens all the time. So you can inherit money. Okay, at seventy five. You, somebody dies and gives you a bunch of money. And then next thing you know, you're suddenly faced with an extreme risk of a gold digger. And also the extreme pain of your final, the, the end of your life, just when you should be really enjoying yourself, is when you're being absolutely dismantled by a cold, manipulative person. And you're being dismantled in the way that was so powerful that it gutted and killed your, your heroes in, in, in entertainment in the 60s and 70s and 80s, right? So you, it's guy is totally unable to deal with it in his 70s. He, especially if he's never had to deal with it, right? So this can happen to you at any age, at any time. You can suddenly be, uh, you know, catapulted into a situation where gold diggers will, will surround you. Okay, so don't think because it hasn't happened, it's not going to happen. I'm telling you right now, you're a cool guy. You're still listening to this. You're a smart guy. Anything can happen in life. Life is so, this is what's so lovely about life. It's so unpredictable. (laughs) 
I can't even like, it's just so amazing. Life is so amazing. You got to hang in there. You got to hang in there. And I mean mentally. Because the thing is, a lot of guys, they're, they're not ki- killing themselves, but they're mentally dead. Okay, because they give up on life. Because they feel like such a fool. They can't even talk about it. Just like my friend who found out that his wife, who he totally loved and had thought about and, and was a player, and that she literally told her best friend that he meant nothing to her, and it was all about the money. And she was very happy because she got the money. I mean... <laughs> I, yeah, I can't even, the way, you know, this guy is a, he's a zombie now. Okay, he's a zombie. And I, like I said, I can't, you know. Okay, another thing that could be confusing about this is it's money, property, status, or prestige. So, so let me give you an example of how difficult it is to imagine this and to be ready for this. I mean, I grew up, as you know, not in Harvard University and, uh, gold mansions it was trailer park uh very poor uh we didn't have any money and uh life was hard you know and so hand-me-down clothes uh you know what up what what you know it's not about yeah it's it was not we were not living the high life okay and and we knew it you know we knew it and and and, and i think just as just to add into this is that i think that this background that I have was actually it's I consider it a gem now because it makes me very practical and very realistic and very what do you call it like I can hustle like I know how to make things work I know how to I know how to like and it gives me confidence because I know I can somehow figure it out like no matter what happens to me literally I'm gonna figure it out like I know that because of my background, <laughs> because it was not easy, you know, because I had to do this. And I know that some guys could not, right? But I know I can. No matter what hits me, I literally am not worried. And I like big challenges. In fact, the harder, the better. Bring it on. <laughs> Bring it on, because these are the things that cause you to really grow, okay? If you can handle them, right? Okay, so gold diggers. Uh, okay, one last thing is... Oh, two, 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 two other uh, things you might not have thought about. Say you're in university, young guy, you're 19 years old, and you think to yourself, well, I don't have any gold diggers. I don't have any money. Guess what? A woman doesn't see how much you money. We're talking about the long con here. So if she sees you getting a master's degree in chemistry and being top of your class and working very hard, and you know she knows you and she knows this guy's money. So she can predict. It's kind of like an NBA scout who meets a candidate, okay, like let's say Luka Doncic, and says, this kid can make it. This kid is going to change the world. And he puts his belief, and then, and then sure enough, the guy absolutely explodes. Now, the man never knows, okay, the way we're built. When someone believes in us, we're like, hell yeah, you know, nobody else believed in me, but she believed in me. And guys will get this. I know guys like this. I'm I'm thinking of one guy in particular, okay, right now. And he went through a very hard time and had one woman who believed in him, stuck by him. And he, in his mind, he used that as like, she's special. This one's special. She stuck with me through all the hard times. And I'm talking really hard times. But, but, why did she stick with him? I don't think... I don't know her, okay? I never met her. But I'm going to say, I think that there's a great chance that the reason why she stuck with him was not because she loved him, okay? Because I know the guy. He's very successful. I think it's because she knew that he was going to make it. She knew this was her chance. She knew. Because a woman is always trying to get a man to commit, okay? Okay? It's not easy to get a cool guy to commit, okay? A guy who's got a lot of girlfriends, you know, he's busy, he's thinking about other things, he's, he, you know, a man being with a woman does not make a man want to commit. A man having sex with a woman over and over, it, it doesn't, it makes him bored. He wants a new woman, right? And a woman, as she stays with a man, she tends to get more open to commit, okay? That's just the way the sexes work. Uh, and so a woman is always trying to, 
a woman who wants to marry or get, you know, uh, let's say a regular woman and gold diggers, they're thinking, how can I get a man? This is when girls talk about this kind of stuff all the time. How can I get him to commit? You know, I think he's a player. Are you, do you think he's a player? I, I don't know. I, you know, how can I, you know, <laughs> and, and, and this is all good. Okay, this is, this is like, we all have our evolutionary challenges and this is woman's challenge. And historically, this is something that separated the winners and losers. So you can't, do not blame people for being a success, okay, in whatever field it is, okay, whether it's love or money or friendship or whatever. Women that are good at it, okay, they're just good at it, okay, they, they're the winners, okay, they're the winners, and they go for the most prestigious guys. Okay, so Gold Digger is so invisible because what does she want? If you're my friend, he was at his bottom and she could see that he was going to quickly rebound and he did. In fact, he rebounded even better than before. Okay? So she was right. This woman was a winner in that sense. My other friend, he's 19, he goes to school. He thinks that no women like if a woman loves him, pays attention to him, he just assumes that she loves him. Why? Cuz he doesn't think he has any money. But any smart woman, okay, I shouldn't say smart because it's going to depend on the type of woman. Let me give you an example of a type of woman that would see him as money. Uh, a woman from the Philippines, a woman from a third world country. She will see a guy from a middle class family who's going to school, getting pretty good, good grades, who's working on a degree that's going to make money. It's a high, high chance of being profitable. You know, he's programming artificial intelligence. He's working on, working on battery technology, cutting edge research. You know, she sees that and a third world woman will say, you know what, that I'm willing to put up with. She might have like 10 boyfriends back in the province, but she's going to say she and this is what confuses the guys in Western countries because they think Western girls, they want money faster. okay? because there's more money. okay? they have more opportunities. So they're going to look for a guy who's got more now right now. okay? And maybe a little bit in the future, okay? But it depends on the level of the woman, her financial situation, her status, her prestige level. And, and, and so it, it, the same factors create the same level of heat like a nuclear reactor inside the woman, it, for diff- but there's different factors that create that heat. So you know, what creates that heat? What creates that I'm going to... I'm going to, and, and again, the gold digger is the, is on, if you have a bell curve, in the middle is the averages, and then you have the extremes on either side, okay? <clears throat> the, the, the gold digging woman is on, not necessarily the very far extreme, but <clears throat> let's say the, on the right-hand side, right? So the average woman, she's going to think, I mean, there's many reasons, many things she might think. She might have sympathy for men. She might like understand that men are human beings. Uh, she might uh, not be patient enough to do it, to be a gold digger. Because being a gold digger requires patience. It's a certain type of woman. Uh, not every woman has the, the nuts and bolts to be a gold digger. Because maybe there's a lot of women who would like to be gold diggers, but they don't have the patience for it. You need patience for this one. You need, you, need, you need grit. You need, I would say that there are times when you're going to need a real lack of empathy to really be a gold digger because you're tricking a man at the lowest, at the deepest level. And you know it. That's the thing about this con. And this is what creates such a sense of isolation, loneliness, and a feeling of being lost in a man. And also, and this is what men's feelings and men's experiences are just not talked about. So I'm going to talk about this. It's like the Apple logo. You know, there's a big bite out of the Apple. That's how a man feels. He feels utterly gutted afterwards. And he can't understand why. And, 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 and of course, you know, like we, we talk about this a lot, but society ridicules him and doesn't give a fuck, okay, at all, okay. In fact, men will say, ah, oh, you should have known, you know, I knew, or whatever, you know. Oh, you dummy, you know, oh, you idiot, you know. Or even, you know, you, it's your fault, you know. There, there, there is no 
there are no people. And I think this is the, to, to society's detriment because if somebody is gutted and scammed by a, by a, a manipulative evil person, it is in society's interest to pay attention to that. Because, you know, society, society runs better when it runs on truth. And when a man is utterly gutted and he's, he, needs, he needs counseling, he needs therapy, he needs support. Really, a man who's been post-gold digger, he needs like real support. Like he's going to make mistakes. It's not easy. He's going to be like lash out. He's going to be very unhappy. I think a lot of guys uh, in, in, in the MGTOW community have been severely taken advantage of by people. And that causes a lack of trust. And it also causes a lashing out. It causes uh, fear and a lot of things that don't lead to success, right? So like the red pill rage, right, is one example. So I, I want to say that, that, that the end uh, of, of, of this experience for a man can actually be the rebirth of him as a man because it causes a man... Anytime you have this type of level of destruction in your mind, it, it really gives you the opportunity. And, and this is the question I ask you <clears throat> is, are you going to give up? Are you going to give up on life or are you going to fucking try? Because if you're willing to try, the tools are here. The tools are here and they work. And you can come out of things like this even stronger than before. Why do I say that? Is it because some kind of motivation? No. It's because you will understand yourself. And you will also have tools that can stop you. I talked about the emotional black hole or getting sucked into the whirlpool. You will have tools. You'll say, okay, I, I don't need to do this. I'm going to, you know, you can recognize yourself going into it. Let me just give you one example. And I talked about it many, many episodes ago, maybe two years ago. Uh, but it's NLP technique where when you want something to feel stronger or weaker, you come, you imagine yourself going into a movie theater. Let's say you want a, a feeling to be stronger. Okay. So you come into it, you, you imagine yourself walking into a movie theater. Nobody's there, just you. And there's a, it's an old movie theater. It's one of those like classic movie theaters with the curtains hanging and silk curtains and everything. And then you look up on stage and there's like a tiny little, you can barely see it. There's like a little, little creature moving around. You realize it's like the size of an ant. And it's, it's you. And you realize, oh. And then, and then, and then it gets bigger. And, and then it gets taller. It started getting bigger and bigger. Next thing you know, it's like, it's, it's, it's big. Like huge. Like say 10 feet tall. And it's, it's beaming with confidence now. It's you up on stage. And, and you see yourself handling situations. Being in control, being confident, and then it gets bigger. It gets bigger, and then next thing you know, the the, the, the you on the stage becomes so large. Imagine yourself, and you're you're okay, you're crouching down like you're doing squats, and your leg is up. Your your back is up against the roof of the theater, and then you you bust the theater open, and just beaming with energy and muscles, and you see yourself towering over the theater. And laughing, you know, <laughs> you want to think of a long, uh, you need a loud sound for this. We're just like, yes, you know, they're like, Rah! that kind of feeling. And that is, and that is how you amplify in emotion. Okay. You can practice that. It really works. And oh, another thing, when, it, when you start out on the stage, you're black and white with no sound. And then as you get louder and bigger, you become more, your, you be, your voice is powerful, it's deeper, and, uh, and also you are color now. So you've gone from <clears throat> black and white to technicolor, where you're just, you're just shining with, like your skin is like shining with energy, right? That kind of thing. So, so that, and, and you do the exact opposite when you want a feeling to become less. Okay, so let me give you a technique for that. So imagine that you have an emotion that you want to either diminish. Okay, 
So you might have, like, I'm sure you, you definitely have something, okay? So I really want you to try it. This shit really works, guys. This is like amazing, okay? Like it takes time. It's, it, it's like, uh, it takes a little bit of practice, okay? I'm not saying that some guys will right away realize, holy shit, this really worked the first time. But even for those guys, you want to practice it because you'll get it more under control, this, this ability to amplify and also to diminish emotions that you want to diminish. Now, you don't make them go away, but you can, you can diminish them to the level that you can deal with them, where they're not sucking you like hopelessly, helplessly into a black hole. So uh, one way you can do it is, is this technique, okay, the balloon technique. So what you want to do, imagine you have a very painful situation, okay? So it could be uh, anything, loss of a child, uh, could be like the realization that you were utterly used uh, and lied to and deceived by somebody that you really trusted. You really, you really believed them, right? And it's like, you don't believe everybody, but you believe this one person. And they are the ones who fucked you. And they fucked you worse than you could have ever imagined. It, it creates like almost you can't even stand up when you really think about it. In fact, it's so bad that you don't even think about it. Okay, that's the type of thing. You can start with something like that. You can also start with something that's very lightweight, like when you had a bad haircut and you looked like an idiot and you felt like embarrassed. Okay, so if you want to start with something small, you can do that. You can start with something big. Okay, so what you want to do is look down on the ground and there's suddenly there's a, there's a TV monitor or a computer monitor on the ground. And this monitor is, let's say it's a 15 inch monitor. It's very bright. Okay, it's like a, it's very clear. It's like an OLED, high quality. In fact, this monitor is even more than OLED. It's like alive. Like people like stand up out of there and they go back in. And it's like, it's like moving. It's, it's like there's three dimensional. It's like amazing. It's bubbling. It's like, it's, 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 the speakers are huge. You can hear it. It's almost like there's like massive speakers all around you on the ground. Just, just amplifying the sounds all from behind you and in front of you. In right and left, the sound is just like booming from this, this monitor you're watching, which is a 3D alive monitor. Okay. And, and on this monitor is the worst thing, the thing that you really want to, you want to like diminish. Okay. So the next thing you want to do is you want to take, imagine that you have, there's, you have the power button or knob. Okay. So you, you can turn it down. Okay. There's like a, there's like a, Let's say there's a nuclear power plant and you have the, the knob that turns it all the way off if you want to, okay? So it powers this monitor and all these speakers. So what you do is you start to turn down that power. So grab it with your right hand, start to turn that big knob, old school fucking RCA knob, and you're turning it, you're turning it, and slowly the energy of the video is going down. The, the, the amount that the characters jump out of the screen is less. And the color is starting to dissipate. And the sound is no longer as clear and bright and booming around you. It's like starting to become more monotone. It's going down, it's going down, going down. And the sound, now feel in your body, how do you feel? As the sound and the color start to, dis and the movement start to disappear from this picture. You felt this, at first, you felt this strong feeling of bad emotion when you thought about this situation you're watching on the screen. But now all of a sudden it starts to, I don't know, it just feels more manageable. Now it's, now all of a sudden it's like, you see the sound, you turn it down, turn it down, turn it down. Suddenly, the screen starts to frost up. It's, it, it's all, it, it becomes like frozen. Just like, all the characters stop. And all the sound stops. Now you start to see cracks, cracks in the picture. It's like, and it looks, it starts to look like an old, like a sepia picture from the, from the 1800s, cowboy picture. And it's like, it's, it's, it's very, you can almost, it's very difficult to even see the details. It's like, it's such an old picture covered in dust. And now you see, from the right hand side, a huge like slab of ice, right? It's like 12 inches thick. It's like, you can see that frost coming off of it. It's like global cooling is coming. 
this huge slab of ice is coming to your right hand side. And what it does is it slides like over the top and locks in over this thing that used to be a picture that's now frozen. It's covered in ice. It's absolutely untouchable. And as you look through the ice, you can barely see the picture. You know, now I can't really see the picture anymore. Now feel your body. How do you feel? Okay. How do you feel about that emotional pain? Okay. Now, you notice there's an air balloon. Now the air balloon, you get into it, and you, you go up just a tiny bit, like I'd say half a meter, and you look down, and the picture's a little bit smaller than before, right? It was a 15-inch monitor. Now it's a little smaller because you're up another meter or two. Now you're up two or three meters. The balloon, you know, it starts to go up, and as it goes up, the screen becomes smaller and smaller. And the feeling of the emotional connection that you had, it's more distant. Okay, you can feel it in your body. It's like going away. It's getting smaller. It's there's no energy anymore. It's just this thing. It's still there, but it's like it's not affecting you, right? And then you go higher, higher. Next thing you know, you're higher than the trees. And you look down and you can see where the, the plate of glass went in, where where the screen used to be. And then you go and you go higher and higher. As you go higher and higher, of course you can't see the picture anymore. It's like completely it's just like this mass of, you know, green land below you now. And you can't even see where, as you go higher and higher to the clouds, you can't even see where the original screen was. And, and the feeling is like more and more, farther and farther. You feel it pulling away from you. And you go up higher. Next thing you know, you're up in space. You're going up through space. And you see the curvature of the earth. And you're going up higher and the sun is coming. The beams are coming over the top of the earth. And you look down and you can't even see like which country is which. You know, because there's clouds and it's hard to tell. And, and you're so far away. Finally, you go farther and farther. And you can take this as far as you want. Some people take this as far as where they finally, they see the earth as a little dot, like one of the stars. And some of them even, some people even want to go farther where to the point where they see the uh, galaxy and then the galaxy just becomes one of millions and millions and billions of galaxies. And they don't even remember which one was our galaxy, right? So you, you're using this and as you're drifting away, the feeling, the emotions are getting lo- less um, cognizant. They're not bothering you, right? So you can learn techniques like this. There are things that you can do to heal and to, and to lower the temperature of different emotional things. And then that allows you, it's like an engine that's too hot. You can't work on it, right? You gotta cool the engine down. You cool the engine down, you know, before it's too hot to even, you know, touch, you know? Now it's cool enough that you can start to work on it, right? That's what you wanna do with your emotional stuff. So one of the techniques is what I'm talking about. It doesn't cure everything, but it can be very powerful. So you can either increase something or you can decrease different emotions and feelings. So I say this very seriously because a lot of guys uh, in, you know, on Ronin Man have been through a lot of stuff. And you want to start to improve your ability to control and to manage uh, and to uh, work with your own emotions and feelings and ability to handle your life on your own. This is a very big part of being unblackmailable. And this is one of the main reasons why no matter how well most guys do in life, they're just one step away from it all fucking falling apart because they don't have control of their emotion. And something will come along that will tip them over the scale and they'll start to make mistakes. They'll start to be their own worst enemy and they end up just back where they were in that creates a very, very deep feeling of hopelessness because no matter how far they go up, it's like a compulsive gambler. No matter how much he makes, he knows that there's, he's just going to lose it all in the casino, right? So you don't need to be like that. You don't want to be like that. And you're not in the right community if that's your goal. <laughs> to have a huge weakness is going to take you down. That, that's not why we're here, right? We're here for the exact opposite. And it's very very doable. 
And I see it all the time. I see guys who come in, had no control of their own emotions and their feelings, and just have, find themselves sabotaging themselves and being utterly, guys that have been fucked over in this way, they're utterly confused. They, they, they cannot, they just stumble out like, a, like, a, like a, a total zombie out of this relationship. And then there's nobody to help them. And they're just like, they're raw. They're fucking so raw. They're like a rock star on the verge. Of, they're completely destroyed emotionally. And nobody cares. There is nobody to give them hope. There's nobody to explain it. And if they try to talk about it, all they're going to hear is issues. This guy's got issues, right? You know, and it's like there is no, literally, no sympathy coming from society. That's why I make my channel is because there is, there, this, this situation is just crazy. It's just fucking crazy. Guys are loving. Guys are trying. Guys are living. Life is fucking awesome. If other people are not going to show you the way, you have to find it yourself. And this is how you do it. Fuck those other people. Figure it out. And once you figure it out, it actually, once you get control, you really understand yourself and you really start to get on this, on this path, what will happen is that you can now deal with society. You, you can deal with society unreactively where you're like, okay, you know, things that would bother you before or things that you would run away from, you're like, ah, okay, I can deal with that. You know, you say, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> or here's what I think's happening. You know, like, you don't, you, don't, you don't have to explain anything to anybody. You don't have to, you, don't, you, you can totally be a man who controls his own destiny. And the very best news is that you can heal and you can reach new heights. Think about it. You go from somebody who's confused, who's like a, a, like a, a house of cards emotionally, falls down all the time to somebody who has confidence in himself, has tools, who understands his weaknesses, right? And has built up from the bottom. And that gives you confidence. It just fucking gives you confidence. And it gives you tools, which, which give you more confidence, right? So there you go. I'll leave it at that. And I'm going to go and do my yoga. And I'm going to hit some veggies and some fruits. And then I'm going to go over to uh, get some Indian, Southern Indian food, which I fucking love. It's Saturday here in uh, Bangkok. The summit's coming up in Melbourne. I cannot fucking wait. And I'm so excited. So I look, to, look forward to seeing you guys there. If anybody wants, if any of this stuff touches you, you know, you want to go in deeper, look down below. I do offer a coaching and uh, soon to be announced mentoring program. Uh, but I hope that this has been helpful. I hope that this has given you uh, valuable tools that you can use now, right? Just today, as you, as you turn this off, you go off in your life and say, I'm going to try those things. And I hope you do. All right. Runa Man signing off.